Rosa Louise McCauley was raised on her grandparents' farm in Pine Level, Alabama. As a child, Rosa was exposed to the realities of segregation. She walked to school daily because the elementary school bus system prohibited black students from riding. Rosa later attended the Alabama State Teachers College High School. However, due to both her grandmother and mother's illnesses, she was forced to drop out. At 19, Rosa met Raymond Parks, who worked with Montgomery's NAACP chapter. After their marriage in 1932, and much encouragement, she earned her high school diploma. Rosa joined Raymond in the NAACP, serving as the chapter's secretary and youth leader. History is peculiar. It places gifted and talented women and men in situations where they must make a choice. The choice she made was on the afternoon of the 1st of December, 1955, on a bus as she was going home from her seamstress job in a department store in Montgomery, Alabama. Rosa, along with three other black passengers, were told to give up their seats to a white male passenger. She refused and was arrested. An all-day bus boycott was organized on the day of Rosa's trial, December 5, 1955, where she was fined $14 and found guilty. She was a role model for courage in the face of racial injustice. Rosa Parks, through her quiet eloquence, through her commitment both to her faith and to the cause of civil rights and racial equality, was prepared to sacrifice everything, her security, even her life, to fight for what was right, at least her perception of what was justice. Thousands of people walked, carpooled, and took cabs to work. The boycott lasted 381 days, with the 26-year-old Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. as their leader. Rosa was not the first person to refuse to give up her seat. Two other women were previously arrested for the same offense. However, it was this quiet 42-year-old who became the face of the Montgomery bus boycott. In 1956, groundbreaking history was made. The Supreme Court decision by a 9-0 vote supported the civil rights position calling for an end to racial segregation on municipal buses. Unable to find work, largely due to her political stance, the Parks moved north to Detroit, Michigan, and by 1965, Rosa began to work for Congressman John Conyers until 1988 when she retired. In memory of her husband and in her vision for a better tomorrow, Rosa co-founded the Rosa and Raymond Parks Institute for Self-Development, which educates young people on the civil rights movement, gives freedom bus tours, and provides youth with professional guidance. Rosa also worked giving lectures and advocating for social justice. Rosa Parks passed away on October 24, 2005. She was the first woman and second African American to lie in honor at the U.S. Capitol Rotunda. Rosa received over two dozen honorary doctrines and numerous national and international awards, among them the Medal of Freedom from President Clinton and the Congressional Gold Medal of Honor Rosa was a grassroots activist for social justice and peace through her efforts in the civil rights movement to her participation in the anti-apartheid movement for South Africa. Although she never planned on getting arrested, her simple action changed the course of a nation. I think Mrs. Parks unexpectedly had greatness thrust upon her. I think she was born for it and I do think she achieved it. You see what I mean? But had she not, of that particular day, said, I'm not moving, my feet hurt, we would have a different nation and a different world. One of the first people we met when we moved to Montgomery in, in June of 1955 was Mrs. Rosa Parks. Uh, she lived right across the street from our church and was just a dear, dear, sweet friend of ours. And we learned to know that she was a, one of the most courageous people we ever met. Mrs. Park's cousin was married to my cousin, and she was always a very honorable person. And, and that's how I remembered her, uh, just as a person. As a child, she was small. 
And we look at her now as being this little demure thing, but she was feisty. And she would speak up for herself, you know, when challenged, you know, she didn't have a problem. In the summer of 1955, Mrs. Rosa Parks had gone to a workshop at Highlander Folk School. She was so impressed with the fact that black and white people sat together in the sessions, they roomed together, they ate together, they took walks together, and she said to herself, this is the way it ought to be. Before she became, um, let's say, the person who sat on the bus and uh, kept her seat, she had also worked with the NAACP as its secretary. She worked with the Scottsboro Boys, uh, she formed a youth group, and work with, with young people. She had no children of her own, but she was very concerned with politicizing our young people to understand that they could not accept what they did not think was right. She was a good leader, and we followed her. She was able to, to look at a much bigger picture. She made a pledge to herself that she would never again give up her seat on the bus and she was determined that that was one thing that she could do to, to move things along, not knowing that on the 1st of December, 1955, she would get arrested and spark the, the whole movement here in Montgomery, Alabama. <laughs> 